And we're back with another episode of Franchise My Business, the podcast for franchisors hosted by franchisors. I'm your host, Kevin Oldham, and it's no secret I get excited about every single guest. Now, what's kind of cool about this guest is we've already recorded this session. This is a re-record because <laughs> things just didn't work out. Technology didn't work out. So uh, we have Katie's intro down, but we're going to do it again. So um, I've got Katie Gilberg. She is the founder of Hydrate IV Bar. She is um, a phenomenal entrepreneur. Their headquarters is in Colorado, been in franchising since 2016, and have a presence in Colorado, Arizona, and Texas. Now, what's cool about Katie is she was born and raised, or she was born in Denver, went to school at ASU in Arizona, and began working in medical sales, like right after college, and kind of got her brought working in Las Vegas. And that's where she first saw IV therapy. And that's actually the very first place that I saw IV therapy as well. You got to think about the fact that people are getting dehydrated and kind of going hard in the paint in Vegas. And so that's one of the places the IV therapy really started. And now it's caught wildfire and, um, and it's, it's spreading throughout the country. Cool fact about Katie. She was an athlete growing up and she was a Denver Broncos cheerleader. Now, I will tell you <laughs> that as a staunch Chiefs fan, I could care. T- I, I don't care very much about, about the Broncos. I do hope football that football football's football, but I do hope that you guys You're get on your a good streak right now. <laughs> I hope that you guys, I hope you guys get your act together because you are a classy organization, a great uh, adversary for us in the AFC West, but poor Russell Wilson. I hope he, I hope, I, I hope he has a better year because he's a great, he's a great guy. He's a great role model. He's a great quarterback. I think he just didn't get, put into the right system. So hopefully all the off season changes will, will make a difference, but this isn't about football. This is about KD. This is about hydrate IV bar. This is about growing franchises. So let's hop into that good stuff. Katie. Well, thank this, you. That was quite the introduction. I mean, I told you, I don't, I don't do a canned <laughs> intro for, you know, you can't just record yeah. that and have it apply to everybody. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. So, and I think I remember from our last conversation, but really like the IV therapy space, that's the first time I saw it as a consumer. That's the first time you saw it. Do you know, is that kind of where things kind of re- where the United States saw this and then it started going kind of mainstream and now I've got one, you know, two miles away from me? I believe so. It's very common that people come to us for the first time saying, I saw this in Vegas. I heard about this in Vegas. Yeah. Um, obviously there you know, most of the brands are targeting overindulgence. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a lot of business travel, work travel conferences. You're totally burning the candle at both ends. Right. So that is, you know, Miami, New York, Vegas, mm-hmm. some kind of bigger areas like that. Um, definitely more popular for yeah. a non-traditional setting. Yeah. Uh, so like you said, I was working in Las Vegas, working in medical sales, and I have a business background, but I was working for a compounding pharmacy, new amazing doctors, nurses. Mm-hmm. And I, I moved back to Denver where I was born and raised. And I just saw an opportunity. No one had heard of IV therapy. No one, meaning my closest some, circles. Yeah, some of the um, fringes. It wasn't really mainstream back in 2016 by any means. No, and yeah. there weren't there weren't physical brick or mortars. There were, you know, traditional doctor's offices, and then mm-hmm. of course your urgent cares and hospitals. Um, and so I was working with you know, even through the Denver Broncos cheerleader organization, these athletes were requesting the services for performance Mm. and recovery and more the athletic side of it. Um, But they didn't have anywhere that was as accessible as, you know, Hydrate IV Bar is now. And I really, you know, my goal was to create a wellness brand that talked about the health benefits of, you know, optimizing your immunity and being properly hydrated. You know, yeah. we're, in, we're in the Mile High City, so yeah, we get a lot a of deal. altitude sickness. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really, I, I, this started as a passion project for me. I loved the service. I wanted it accessible um, in Denver yeah. and just took the, took the opportunity to do so. So did you build this? So your first location was in Denver. Did you build it yes. with the intent of franchising or did you kind of say, Hey, you built it and you're like, okay, it's time to expand. What do we do? Yeah, I built it. You know, I was super excited. I was, you know, praying one would work. I was yeah. excited to have a job that I was passionate <laughs> about. I mean, that was truly, I wanted to work for myself. I mm-hmm. loved the idea of myself and a nurse 
working in the spa. We have our medical director, our oversight, overseeing physician, who's incredible. And at the start, it was the three of us. I mean, I, they did everything clinical and then I did everything business. I Mm -hmm. did, you know, our everything except the legal component because that's right, very right. important and yes. i would never recommend trying to do that yourself yeah, if you're not no. a professional especially if but, you're in a regulated industry like what you're in yeah but bookkeeping marketing mm-hmm. um building maintenance i mean everything i was doing myself and i you know it it wasn't until a few months in, I started realizing, okay, we are getting a ton of momentum. Yeah. People are enjoying this. I knew from the beginning in our industry, the biggest challenge would just be educating people that these services were available and yeah. that, yes, we were creating a spa-like atmosphere. We wanted to you know, have an elevated experience, but by no means were we cutting any corners on the clinical side of it. And cool. that's still... you know client safety, patient safety is of, of utmost importance. And so earning our clients trust and educating them that these are the same policies and protocols and pharmaceuticals, um, you know, we are held to the same standard. We can just do this in a, in a, with a better experience. Yeah. Um, and so educating people that this available was the biggest challenge. Once they started coming in, they loved it. Our retention continues to be amazing awesome. word of mouth referrals. And so it just quickly started snowballing. And I thought, Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're, here we go. We've got yeah, here we proof go. of concept is here, right? Yes. That always feels cool. Like when you go build something and you're not, you know, as entrepreneurs, we you're know, risk takers, but the key to be a great risk, to a great entrepreneur is reduce risk as much as possible. Like get as much information, but nothing's guaranteed. Like you open, you you have spent six figures building out your first store, you haven't made your first yeah. dollar yet, and you're like praying that things are gonna stick. And then yes. it sticks, and you're like, oh, I got feedback. Like this is cool. Let's lead in. Let's see where this. Let's see where the story goes. So when did you guys start franchising then? Started, didn't start franchising until 2020, um, oh. which was interesting timing as well. Very interesting <laughs> but, timing. Yeah. So right away, you know, in 2016, April of 2016, our first spot opened. I had opened my second corporate location by June of 2017. Okay. So going from one to two was a big step. You know, mm-hmm. I can't be at two places at once. We're building our team. <laughs> yep. Um, and for me you know, just the decision that I had made personally was I have always used profits from one store to finance into the next store. So I've never taken on debt to open a spa. I've just let it run organically. Beautiful. And so I got to four locations, um, by 2019, I had at that point had many clients and just people around me say, Mm -hmm. you know, you've done this four times now, like this is really, how can you bring this to the masses? How can you scale? Mm -hmm. And I was not familiar with franchising. I, to be honest, had a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth thinking, how is someone going to love this as much as I do? And how do I know that they will uphold the brand standards and that they will um, just care? And Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I'm so happy that that was also that was a risk that I took is yep. leaning in and saying, I trust these business mentors and coaches and consultants and our legal team. And, you know, I, I'm going for this, like this, yeah. this concept makes sense, especially when I, when I wanted to scale into new states and new markets where mm-hmm. the clinical team needs to be licensed in those areas. And so that was a big piece of it for me. Um, and now that we have been franchising. So I have four corporate spas. We have six franchises open. Um, I love it. I, it's been the best decision. And I think, you know, really we've learned a lot. It's a a whole new ball game and learning to support, um, our franchisees has been incredible, but it's given me this whole new kind of energy, um, that I didn't know was possible. That's so cool. And energy is something that I've been exploring a ton. And if you're, if actually just every human listening, you don't even have to be an entrepreneur. Like we wake up with a certain amount of energy units and those units get depleted throughout the day, but there are things that can give us energy back. Like it's, it's kind of like, you know, my phone's plugged in. 
Yeah, like B12. But, <laughs> but moreover, this <laughs> JMOS plug, you can get B12 at Hydrate IV Bar in states of Texas, Colorado, and Arizona. Arizona. This message brought to you by Hydrate IV Bar, courtesy of Katie Gilbert. Okay, that was our commercial. <laughs> but the reality is we, we, can, we get to choose. And anybody that says that we don't get to choose, like you can change the job. You can, you can choose whether or not mm-hmm. to fulfill a, a function in your company. You got to preserve that energy. And particularly if you're going to franchise, because a lot of people don't think about the fact that it's a new business. You're, you're, it's got a new legal structure. It's got a whole different set of uh, regulations. And moreover, it's, it's a startup. It is a flat out startup. You're going to have capital investment. It's, you're going to need energy. And then you want to make sure that once you've got it built, that you receive energy back from, from what you built. And that's kind of the cool symbiotic relationship that I've always enjoyed about franchising and why it's my favorite business model is because I get energy from the people that I serve when they're carrying our flag, our brand, and, and they're winning. Like they're getting what they Absolutely. want in life. And then the customers that, that they serve that we don't ever know, we know there's this trickle down effect that's super, super cool that you can make a huge impact with a small team. Huge. I love that. Me and it too. is. It's, you know, now I feel like I'm like proud mama. I yeah. get to go out and Heck yes. I, you get to share these wins and, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's, it's so rewarding for me, especially with our, our franchisees to date. Um, we have, you know, our first groups started as single units yeah, and our, our first three, it was a family member, a client, um, and a friend. And okay. so, you know, there, it's like, let's, they're all very friendly. And intimate. They're in, they, they like us, the, we know yeah. them. Let's, yeah. And, um, you know, one, like the fact that they trusted me and us and our team, mm-hmm. um, they have a seat at the table. They have been so important and key to helping us build this infrastructure. Yep. Um, all of them have built or purchased multiple units now at this point. That's so cool. And now, so, you know, I have one of my nurses, for instance, she was a nurse. She's a, a young mom, her and mm-hmm. her husband bought one of our franchises and they have opened and out of the gates, they've been the strongest spa really? um, in their first, yes, in their first 90 days. And for me to look at one of my former employees who... <sighs> You know, so was cool. working in a hospital, so burnt out, so exhausted, looked at Hydrate as, you know, a new career path for her where she could all of a sudden balance her clinical skills and being a mom. And now she's a business owner and successful. And I mean, I am like, it, even just that alone has yeah, made it all worth it. Yeah. I was going to say, those are the stories that make it worth it. Um, it. It's very similar to something we've just done with one of our smoothie shops. We took over one of our smoothie shops and took it as a corporate location, remodeled it. And throughout the whole process, we had this young, amazing guy, Corbin, who's been with the company since before we bought it in 2019. And he's managing a store for us. And, you know, we put him into business ownership. Um, we helped underwrite him Amazing. and everything. And to, to this day, and I believe, I believe when I look back, you know, I always think about being old on the rocking chair on the front porch. My wife and I are looking at the sunset and I'm reflecting on my career. That's going to be one of the core points of it. Absolutely. Like it's one of the things I'm most proud of. And, and the fact Absolutely. that he's killing it too. Like I looked at his, his May, April numbers, he's killing it. And I'm like, that is so awesome. Like that alone was that's worth amazing. it. Just being able to change one entrepreneur's life, you know? And that's the pay it forward. I mean, I, I've had so many people that have, mm-hmm. whether it's right place, right time, or, yeah. you know, the energy you put into the world, yeah. you know, you yeah. get back. But I have had so many people with unbelievable generosity and support and mentorship. And so the more I can continue to pay that forward, yeah. I mean, that's something that I'm very passionate about. Yeah. Also sounds like you're very fiscally responsible. And that's something that I want to make sure that people really understand as well. Cause I think that, you know, there's obviously initial capital that you have to, you know, legal is probably like one of the biggest components, you know, mm-hmm. count on spending 20, 30 grand in legal because you're going to have to get your franchise disclosure document. You're going to have to, yeah. you're going to have to build your operating manual. Like there's a lot of paperwork, but it's like, it's not one time stuff. You got to pay the attorneys every year, but okay. there's some fixed costs up front. Absolutely. And a lot of people I think think, Hey, I have to go get a loan and all these things. And the reality is you don't. 
You don't. Mm -hmm. Like it's not as expensive to start a franchise. If you already have an operating prototype to layer a franchise mm -hmm. system on top of it, it's a lot more work than it is capital. Like writing right. the operations manual, right. you, it's hard to outsource that. I mean, right. it really is. I wrote ours for the smoothie shop. Who wrote yours? We Well, so going back to 2020, to your point, I mean, there are areas where, you know, cash is king, right? Yep. And so how can we focus on profits? And then what are we going to do in that profits? How do we reinvest it into, you know, the business system mm -hmm. is what I've chosen to do. Um, but there's areas you do not want to cut corners. Yeah. Legal, accounting, yep. you know you want to to pay for those professionals. Um, so our team had brought on consultants. We were, it really has always, I mean, for me still, the most important piece that I invest in are the people around me. Yeah. And so that is, you know, hiring people that are more experienced, mm -hmm. that are smarter than are like, I always hire above me because that's the only way we will elevate. And yeah. in the franchise network, you know, franchising was new to me. I'm never going to pretend that I, I have 20 years of experience and have read every book. I haven't. And yeah. so hiring operations and marketing and legal that come from that world that yeah. can help me. I have the vision. I have the passion. I will work harder than most. I will, you know, we are like my, my corporate team and I are ready to grind, but we needed to find those people that could really elevate us in the franchising space. And awesome. we've done that. And I'm really proud of that. Um, Going back to the kind of the financing, we had committed to building out this system January of 2020. <laughs> March. I'm just happens. laughing. Uh, there's, it's just, yeah, uh, your timing's amazing, right? The timing's amazing. And yeah. I thought, you know, not only are my spas, you know, closed indefinitely, like we were deemed non essential. So it's that's. You, you know, were deemed non essential? But, Yes. I'll bet you if you were in Missouri, you would have been deemed essential where we are in oh Kansas City. Gosh, I'm pretty sure. I could just fight for it all day long. Yeah. But um, so not only did I have the pressure of, I mean, just all of that and yeah. managing my team and my people and my emotions. And, but also I'm supposed to be forward thinking about how this is going to be so great. And I should share this with other people. And, and it was crazy. Um, yeah. the, the silver lining is, we had, there was a specific window, there were eight weeks that I had my, you know, a lot of our nurses went mm -hmm. back into the hospital systems. Um, so they were, you know, they were fine with work. They were working like crazy. I had my managers, my admin managers who I didn't want to furlough. I mean, I was, <coughs> wanted to keep them going. So mm -hmm. there were eight weeks where we all of a sudden had all of this time and we went, we redid every manual, every training process, every... And you so repurposed your team. You, yeah, you we repurposed. repurposed. That is so our favorite. Our favorite word of the year was pivot. Like yeah. we, what are we going to do? Like we had yeah. one problem, and then we would pivot, and then something else would happen, and be another block, and we would pivot. But we were so committed, and yeah. I think because we had invested so much, not only financially but emotionally, that it was like we the only way. Like we literally just have to keep going through yeah. this, yeah. and we're we in. did. But we were able to, you know, open and sell franchises a lot quicker than we would have otherwise because we had all this time. <laughs> That's actually really cool because it's like, hey, um, you you were given a gift of time that you didn't have. You yes. were forced. Which can which is priceless, really. Right. It's like, okay, cool. And I need I want to keep my team busy and I don't want to pay them just to sit at home and play video games right. or whatever. Like I'd like them right. to be doing something of value. That's really cool. That's that's actually really So who wrote our manuals? I mean, we we did internally everything. Yeah. We yeah. filmed all of our videos. We and so no one, you know, no one knows the business like you do. We were yeah. able to comb through every single piece so Man. that we knew confidently you know, here is what we are delivering. Um, and I think, you know, that's even something that we're really proud of right now when we talk to, you know, new leads that are coming in mm -hmm. is not only have we been operating, you know, over seven years now, but we do have our four corporate spas. They get to be, you know, I shouldn't, they're the guinea pigs, you know, yeah. I'm like, let yeah. me, I've made the mistakes. Yep. I've, I've done the wrong marketing promo. Mm -hmm. I have, um, you know, paid too much for a utility, like mm -hmm. let me practice. And so <laughs> right. any changes to, you know, 
hiring, training, menus, items, protocols, we do first yep. and then can really confidently say like, this is the proven concept. Here you go. Yeah. Um, and we'll continue to do that as we evolve. Yeah. And that's one thing that I, th- I found was hugely credible as well. Like when we took over our smoothie shop during the pandemic, you know, I don't think that we had a ton of credibility when we were talking in perspective operators because they're like, you guys have them not ran a smoothie shop. And literally like our, we, we ended up taking it over. I was on vacation my, in Florida. I still remember my business partners like it's ours now. And like day two, our first employee didn't show up and didn't open. And we got like really thrown into the deep end dealing with franchisee issues. And yeah. it gave us that street cred. So now, you know, if people are looking to join Hydrate IV Bar and open their own location, you've got, you're walking the walk and not just walking the walk small. It's like, yeah, like I've got mm-hmm. four businesses and you can go check them out. And here's our proving ground for every new you know, pr- procedure or anything, treatment. Right. We do it here first before we roll it out. We'll inflect the brain damage on ourselves, give ourselves mm-hmm. a scar so that you can just go and operate your business with as little friction as possible. Well, and I want our franchisees to know that, you know, I am in it too. Mm-hmm. I am a business owner. I have challenges with my employees. I have hurt feelings and people that want to negotiate pay. And I mean, right. all the the, pa- the power goes out for us as well. So yes. how do we navigate these challenges together? Um, I will never pretend to say it's easy. It It's not easy. It doesn't mm-hmm. get easier. Nope. It's just how you learn to react. And myself mm-hmm. now, you know, seven years later, the business owner that I am now is much different than who I was back then. I mean, everything to me was a fire and react and overwhelm. And I was yeah. you know, drinking out of fire hose and cause it's just so new. And yeah. now I still have the same problems, but I can take a deep breath and I'm just in a more, um, more mature, but I just you know have a level of confidence. Well, what am I? You're, you're VUCA capable. So you probably don't know what that is. VUCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Something I've been trying oh, to, it's just, a, it's, it's a label for stuff. The stuff that happens yeah. that is unexpected and your capacity to manage that as you've matured as an entrepreneur has mm-hmm. you you know i always tell people if you you see on facebook or instagram the little uh, the entrepreneurs hey uh uh day even or week and yes. it's like this wavy <laughs> wild ups and downs oh i'm i'm on top of the world oh i just lost client i'm in the toilet you know mm-hmm. and i used to do that as well so we started our business in 2015 and in the past 2 years i realized the highs are great i don't let them get me too you know over the moon excited the lows right. are you know they're they're things you get to navigate and I don't I don't let them like make me depressed for three days three four days at a time like mm-hmm. it used to happen I'm like right. okay it's just stuff and one of the things I've learned is if we can label it we can tame it if you can put a label on it so now you've got a label it's called VUCA and when I bad stuff that. happens you get a flat tire power goes out whatever it is like hey it's just VUCA it's like I can't control it I can label it and I can manage it the best that I can. And you're living proof that your capacity as you do more reps as an entrepreneur increases yeah. for just I love that stuff, stuff. Well, and that's something that I really, yes, I am so passionate still about our services, about the wellness industry, about where mm-hmm. Ivy therapy is today versus seven years ago and where it's headed in the next 10 years. I mean, it's, yeah. it's incredibly exciting. Um, and one of the best benefits about franchising is I continue to build my network and I am loving mentoring and coaching yeah. our other you know people. And so mm-hmm. a lot of the time that we spend, there's Hydrate IV Bar and then there's self-help and leadership. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we talk about like, just what are you doing for your stress and your Mm -hmm. well-being and how do you show up? And so that is extremely important to us because, um, it's not sustainable otherwise. And I'm not going to have a strong franchise system if the people are all over the place. Yeah. So no, I feel you. I feel you. We do a lot of deep breaths. Yeah. No breath. (laughs) A lot of namaste. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, we're, we're cut from the same cloth. I I do a lot of breath exercises as well because 
life's intense. Life is unpredictable. Is. The one, the, the guaranteed thing that I think I have for everybody listening, the two of us included are whatever you mapped out in your perfect day today, I guarantee there was some deviation from it. Something happened, an external mm-hmm. variable changed it. Could be a cancellation of a meeting, something as simple, or it could be something like, hey, mm-hmm. I've got a sick kid. And you, these things happen. Yeah. And how we respond to them. And there's tools and training that you can do like breath work and all sorts of things to help you increase your capacity to manage stuff, yes. stuff, stuff, stuff. I love it. And it, you know, if somebody wants to learn more about you and or your company, like what's the best place for them to go do that? Please visit our website, um, hydrateivbar.com. Okay. It's the best way to look at, you know, our menu, the benefits, services, you see a bunch of pictures of our spa, of our people, our team. Um, there's client reviews. And then we have a landing page specifically for uh, franchising. Perfect. So we would love to, you know, learn a little bit more about us. Of course, social media, our Instagram is also mm-hmm. a great place. It's um, underscore or hydrate underscore IV bar. And then my LinkedIn profile, okay. um, it's Katie Wafer Gilberg. And that's also a great place to connect with me. I would, um, I, I, you know, I love talking about my business. I'm very proud. I'm proud mm-hmm. of our team. And so I would love to continue connecting with others. Great, great. Katie, thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you again for re, re-recording Yay, this. We've already done you. this. But we had a totally different conversation. And that's what I think is, is, I is beautiful about it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. You've been an amazing guest. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that somebody listening got benefit out of this and that you're thinking of somebody who would love to hear Katie's story. So do me a favor and just go ahead and text this episode to them right now. And then if you enjoy what we're doing at Franchise My Business, please smash the subscribe button. Until next time, I'm your host, Kevin Oldham, and I hope that you have a phenomenal weekend.